In this segment, we're going to cover some MIDI recording basics. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. To distinguish this from audio recording, MIDI contains performance data, such as notes that you've played, wheels and nubs control movements, channel settings, time code, etc. Cubase saves MIDI data inside the project file itself. Let's start by creating a new MIDI track. Right click, select Add MIDI Track. Rename your track appropriately, then choose the port where your MIDI controller is connected. In my case, it's my keyboard. It's connected to the Delta 1010 MIDI interface. Incidentally, if you don't see the inspector, click here on the Show Hide Inspector button. Now let's activate VST Instruments. Select Devices, VST Instruments, or press F11. From the drop-down menu, I'm going to choose Hypersonic from Steinberg. On the first channel, I'm going to load a grand piano. And on the second channel, I'm going to load some bells. OK, go ahead and close the hypersonic. Let's set our output so the track plays through hypersonic. Now we arm the track for recording. Now we see some activity, but we don't hear any sound yet. Let's fix this problem. Select File, Preferences. Under MIDI, you want to check MIDI through Active. Apply, click OK. Remember, we loaded two different sound banks on two different channels. From here, we can switch between the output channels or even choose a different sound bank altogether. On the transport panel, let's turn our clicks on as well as our pre count clicks. To set up the number of pre-count bars, select Transport, Metronome Setup, and choose the number of pre-count bars from here. If you want to record your MIDI tight, Auto Quantize should definitely be on. OK, we are now ready to record. Let's rewind to the beginning, press there, and then press the Record button. Let's listen to what we recorded. Now let's choose a different sound bank. Okay, definitely not a piece of art, but you get the idea. This concludes our MIDI Basics segment.